they were uh, in um, in recent years, but it has obviously been were a long they, time since 1983. And they, they were preliminary to the passing of legislation. I, I don't know the answer to that. I, well, I'm just, I just want to point out something here as this House proceeds on its track. Uh, there are some of us here who feel that this country has drifted towards a version of a national security state. When the House begins to meet in secret on matters that relate to security prior to legisla legislative acts, it raises questions about the Constitution of the United States. I know I'm familiar with my friend's uh, awareness that the Constitution gives the, the Congress the ability to make its own rules. I also understand from the First Amendment that Congress wouldn't restrict any establishment of free speech. This is the citadel of free speech. This is the only place in America that someone can stand and say anything they want at any time and be free from any kind of a legal attack. Once we close that up, we're changing the nature of it at a time when this country's at war, when there's been questions raised about secret meetings and what was told with respect to torture, about secret meetings and what was told with respect to rendition, about secret meetings and what was told with respect to private corporations doing wiretapping. I just want the members of this House to incorporate that in their reflections when we proceed to approve a agreement for a secret meeting. I'd also like to state this, to just share my experience and that is without referring to any content of any secret meeting I've been in, and I've been in a few at the beginning of my term in the House. I have found from my own experience, from my own experience, that secret meetings end up being occasions for the communication of information of uh, at least, at best, dubious value. Now, you know, and I, I could point to individuals, at least one individual who's sitting in this chamber right now, who when we had a secret meeting right after 9-11, walked right down that aisle and, you know, uttered a famous barnyard expletive after we were being briefed in a secret meeting by a member of the administration. Some of you were at, there at the time to remember. So I'm just communicating a concern here about the path we're going down. And, uh, you know, I can only do that. Uh, I am going to, uh, I will not attend that meeting, I will withdraw my objections, but I want to have my friends here uh, know that uh, we ought to be proceeding with the utmost caution in going into this direction. General withdraws his objection, is there objection? I'm, I am not going to be attending uh, such a session, I believe that it it violates the spirit of this not, House, but the rules I will the withdraw house. my objection it's since my uh, good friend feels that uh, this is the path that he has to go. Thank you. Madam. Is Madam. there further objection? Reserving the, the right to object. From the gentleman from Arizona. Would the leader yield for two questions? Yes. As I understand the situation, we're going to secure the chambers. Not only did members discuss new surveillance provisions as was the publicly stated reason for the closed-door session, they also discussed 1. The imminent collapse of the U.S. economy to occur by September 2008. 2. The imminent collapse of U.S. federal government finances by February 2009. 3. The possibility of civil war inside the USA as a result of the collapse. 4. Advance roundups of insurgent U.S. citizens likely to move against the government. 5. The detention of those rounded up at RAX 84 FEMA camps constructed throughout the USA. 6. The possibility of retaliation against members of Congress for the collapses. 7. The location of safe facilities for members of Congress and their families to reside during expected massive civil unrest. 8. The necessary and unavoidable merger of the United States with Canada for its natural resources and with Mexico for its cheap labor pool. 9. The issuance of a new currency, the Amuro, for all three nations as the proposed solution to the coming economic crisis. In the span of less than four months, gasoline prices will rise 500%. This has already begun. The prices of both food and shelter rise over 300%. Unemployment levels will reach over 40%. 
the savings of millions will evaporate overnight due to currency devaluation and bank failures. Unrest it will begin in the larger cities first, then spreading out into the countryside. Strong and repressive laws are newly enacted as police and military forces spread throughout the country to counter all signs of growing rebellion. If you are an American hearing these words you must understand this is happening now, it's not conspiracy theory. It is fact. We are in the midst of these cataclysmic human events. Let me explain to you the red, blue and yellow list. Red list. These people are the enemies of the state. They are the leaders of patriot groups, outspoken ministers, outspoken talk show hosts, community leaders, and bloggers who talk about the government. These people and their families will be dragged out of their homes in the middle of the night. They will be driven to a black unmarked helicopter waiting to fly them to FEMA detention camps to be killed immediately. This will take place approximately two weeks before martial law is enforced, shortly after the crash of the economy. Blue List. These are also enemies of the state, but are followers of the Red List resistors. These people will be rounded up after martial law is in place, and will be taken to the FEMA detention centers and killed. I would guess that people such as you seeing this video are on this list. Yellow List. The Sheep. These are citizens who know nothing about the truth behind the government and the New World Order and don't want to know. They are considered to be no threat at all and will be instructed how to behave and will most likely do whatever they are told. Unfortunately there are too many of these to be effectively controlled, so many will be killed or starved. Those people on the yellow list who are not killed will be tagged with an RFID microchip 666 and released like sheep to be tracked and controlled. Wake up! We are all on a red, blue or yellow list somewhere. If you live near any FEMA facility leave before it gets worse. Prior knowledge about events soon to occur have saved millions over the past century, allowing them to flee the most dangerous areas ahead of time, and when they still could. Not everyone that can leave will leave. History has taught this lesson well, dot especially, to the almost complete annihilation of all the Jewish peoples in Europe during World War II and similar camps. We are now facing the imminent dangers of collapsing economies and currencies and the subsequent dictatorial regime that will inevitably follow. These are only the beginning of the hardest questions you will ever have to ask of yourself and your family. These are also questions that have already been asked and answered by those who have faced what you are facing now. You have a rare choice before you now. First choice. Keep living your lives in denial of the overwhelming evidence staring right at you and wait for them to come and take you and your family to the camps for systematic extermination. Second choice. Pack your things and get out of America while the borders are still open. Don't go to Canada or Mexico, because these countries will have the same fate as the USA. Leave the continent and don't look back. History is repeating. What you forefathers did to the Indians, they will do now to you. America is a sinking ship, if you stay on this ship, you will go down with it, and drown. My personal advice, stay away from the UK. Do not believe foolishly, that your government, will allow this type of information, to be made public, much longer. And all the laws that have been passed since 911 gives you George Bush dictatorship. You better wake up. It's in your law. Let's see who's on the yellow list. It says, but a followers of the red list, folks, these people will be rounded up after martial law. What will happen to them? They will be rounded up when martial law is in place and will be taken to the, det the detention centers and re-educated. To those that are following what they call radical extremists, <coughs> they're going to re-educate you. Here's a camp in the Midwest that will be taking you to be re-educated. In some of your churches, your big cathedrals like Shane Baptist, uh, 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 what's the other one? E9 Baptist Deliverance. 
These are going to be temporary concentration camps for you. You think you're going there to praise the Lord? You're going, to, you, you, you're going in these places to be reprogrammed when it's time. Don't sleep. Don't sleep, brothers and sisters. There's a reason your pastors are not paying taxes. They're doing their civil duty for the government to keep you asleep. Let's see who's going to be on the yellow list. The yellow list, these are citizens who know nothing about the new world order and don't want to know. That's the majority of the people. I don't want to hear about that stuff. It's scary. You people, they need you around. The people that don't care, they don't know any better, they think everything's going to be all right. You're asleep. It says right here. These are the citizens who know nothing about the new world order 